Anyhow, joining us now, um, our usual commentator, columnist, former member of parliament, councillor, regional councillor, lawyer, and all round good guy, well, good girl. Are you allowed to say either of these things this day? Hilary Calvert. Am I a guy or girl? If somebody calls you a guy or a girl, do you get offended? Yes, I suppose you get offended either way, don't you, really? Yeah, no, no. I, in fact, I say, well, I used to say guys, meaning a room full of people. Yes. You know, yes. hey you, guys. You guys. Up, you know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you guys. Um, but apparently not everybody thinks that those, are, I did, never thought of them as boys rather than girls, or in fact non-gender or non-binary or... No. In fact, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, since the last we spoke last Tuesday, um, we now have a government. Well, yes, we've got yes. a sworn in government. We've actually got a prime minister. We've got ministers of the crown. Uh, we've got coalition agreements inked and signed. Uh, your reaction, Hillary? I'm very pleased about the whole thing for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them is that I think it's the most democratic um, government arrangement that we've had, probably ever. And the reason I think that is not because we don't usually get a democracy and that people vote and then, you know, like you had more than 50% voting for the Labor Party last time round. Um, but in this case, the Labor Party last time round didn't need to say what it was doing in advance and then do it. I mean, it, the media may or may not have held them to account a wee bit for their promises. Oh, but really? they yeah, fair point. Yeah. Didn't have to do it. Yeah. This time, because you've got a coalition, they've had to put down on paper what they're planning on doing. And so it's and and holding each other to account. And what they've put on paper is what the voters who voted them for them could expect them to have fought for. They haven't got everything they wanted. We don't ever get anything they wanted. But the people who voted, and enough of them voted for these three parties to be a very clear majority, um, should have got fairly much what they voted for. And that's highly unusual and very democratic, I think. Mm. I, I like the idea of what you've just said in actual fact, that the coalition agreement is, is in actual fact clear in such detail, setting out a policy agenda over the next three years that really... They've not only provided the map, but it's almost a topograph topographical map as well, um, highlighting all the features on the way. The last government, you're absolutely right. Um, I think that I think the coalition agreement was about a page, and it was about the jobs that the Greens would get. Well, it wasn't really a coalition agreement because it was a. It mm. didn't, they didn't need each other, mm. and in fact, they didn't even. Um, talk to James Shaw about things in his area that they <laughs> should have, embarrassingly. <laughs> no, that's right. He'd often read the paper, um, what, what, what he was doing in his climate change area. Mm, yes, you're right. Yes. Um, so, but I think in this case, and that means that the coalition will ha ha hold each other to account too, but they were the things that if you voted for them, you would have expected on the whole. Not everything, but fairly much. What, if you voted for ACT, you would have expected ACT to fight for what they fought for. Likewise, Winston's lot. Um, so, uh, uh, well, that's that's the most amazing thing to me, um, and I wonder if it struck you in the same way as well, and that is that um, if you voted ACT or New Zealand first, uh, usually you're disappointed because if you vote for a minor party, because they always give up vast tranches of their policy programme, um, in this particular case, you'd have to say it's exactly the opposite. Vast tranches of their policy programs are in. Yes. And it's what the people who voted for them would have hoped for in general, I think, or would have appropriately hoped for. You know, if you said, why are you voting for New Zealand first? What is it that they do that you like about them? You would have come up with some of the things that were being fought for and have got into the agreement, for example. Mm. Mm. So I think it's um, I think it's about as perfect a democratic result as we've ever had and are ever likely to have, which is not to say people will like what it does or that it'll achieve what it hopes to achieve or any of those things, but 
that's true for whether it's democratic or socialist or communist or whatever it is. They don't get to do what they're hoping they might do. Well, that takes me to the next part. Um, uh, you make you make a very good point about this, you know the roadmap and, and and the detail of the agreement and things like that. If you go back to 2020, Labor had come in. They got 50 percent of the vote. They didn't need anybody, and they didn't. They actually entered not into, as you say, they didn't enter into a coalition agreement with the Greens. They entered into a cooperation agreement with the Greens. Um, and uh, as I remember, they the, their ministers were outside of cabinet, weren't they? The ministers. Yeah, James Shaw was outside of cabinet. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, Wasn't yeah, I mean, uh, but still responsible as a cabinet as as a minister because the ministers outside cabinet are still responsible, as it were, as if they're in cabinet. It's the worst of all worlds in some respects, except that you get a ministerial bottles. Well, but, but one of the reasons maybe is that what we saw was a return to first past the post, didn't we? So we saw a government, for the first time since 1996, we saw a government with sufficient members in the House to completely dominate the policy agenda between 2020 and 2023. And that, what did they do? They Waste went mad. It. They, well, they, well, you might argue but, that, but I would argue they went mad. I, I they, think they, they did both those things. They went mad on things that had, they hadn't campaigned on, mm -hmm. and they wasted their their ability to do things that people would have really hoped that they would do. But they, they in fact did nothing, and and so it left when Chris Hipkins came along, it left him um, behaving like he was in opposition when he was in charge, and without any principled plan to go forward on. You know, in the last year of this next government, there will be, because of the coalition agreement, things that you're working on and working towards. Chris Hipkins said nothing. What are you doing here, Chris? What, what's the aim? What's your party trying to do? It's trying to fight against that other lot who might be elected. That's all it could possibly be said to be doing. If and making a pig's ear of, of money and getting into departments and things. If I was Chris Luxon, though, I would be trying to think that I'm in for six years, not three. So at the nature of New Zealand, I think, I'm trying to remember the last three-year government, it was, it was Labor, 72, 75, and in the middle of that, Norman Kirk died. So um, it, it, it was a, an unusual time, uh, but that was the last three-year government we have. New Zealanders, and it's New Zealanders, us as a collective, tend to vote in a party for at least six years because we think, you yeah. need at least six years to be able to do what you say you were going to that do. means you need to be doing things in the first three to build on for the next three. Correct. But if, so if I, and I'm sure Chris Luxon's a smart man or Christopher Luxon's a smart man, he's thinking exactly that and so is David Seymour as well. If I had Christopher Luxon now, the first thing that I'd be thinking is I actually want New Zealand first back at the next election, don't I? I mean, I'd, I'd be thinking that far ahead to go, we'll probably have to do a deal on an electorate to make sure that New Zealand First get back because New Zealand First won't be in a position. Labor don't want them. They are now completely socially estranged from the centre-left, New Zealand First. Um, so you would anticipate, would you not... Well, arguably the centre-left, so-called, if you're talking about the Labor Party and things as the centre-left, they've disappeared off over the horizon. They're not in this... You couldn't call them centre-left anymore. No, but, I mean, they'll eventually... I mean, Chris Hipkins, and I'm sure... Uh, listen, we've talked to Ingrid Leary on the show. Ingrid would put herself on the left-hand side of that caucus as she describes herself. She's the first person to say, you know, we need to come back. We need to be able yeah. to communicate better. I mean, I, I, yeah. I think already people like Ingrid Leary, they've learned the lessons and they'll just have to apply them over the next three years. They will try and get... I think they... My point was that they left... left Winston rather than Winston leaving oh, them I see what you mean. as an option. Mm, mm. So, I mean, you couldn't, he, he couldn't go with them and think he'd gone with the centre left this time around. No. He's, um, wasn't a possible. But, uh, now the other thing, just saying uh, also, is uh, Maori stuff. I can't remember who it was. It was Willie Jackson or somebody saying it was Maori stuff um, that um, did for this government. Is that true? Was it uh, yep, I think so, um, because there was nothing else. The only things that the government had actually achieved 
that were in anybody's mind positive, and they weren't in my mind. But, I mean, they hadn't achieved good things in health, education, the major things, niceness, social welfare, any of that stuff. They had achieved um, a dominance in the ecological environment, of, in particular, of Maori and an apartheid sort of system developing. And I don't think people liked it. I think most people in New Zealand would say a version of this land is your land, this land is my land, this land is made for you and me. Not this land is your land. This land is made for you and me is what I think people believe in New Zealand. 